Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get-together live here on Facebook at 10.30 in the morning, where we exchange headlines, comments, ideas, questions, topics, suggestions related to how to have an awesome life here in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking community of locals. It is always a pleasure to welcome you into this space. And if this is the first time that you're here, uh, feel free to let us know by writing the word new and we'll give you a proper welcome. My name is Paco and I am so very happy to see you all, particularly in this. Well, I know that there's some people that are watching um, in places where there's snow on the ground and things like that. But it is a chilly 23 degree morning in Puerto Vallarta. It's drizzling outside. And I woke up in this kind of like introspective frame of mind that uh, is going to be pretty evident later on in the broadcast because I want to bring up an interesting topic or something that makes me think about how we interact with people that we love and people that we don't like so much. Um, but I don't mean to be mysterious. I don't need, mean to get ahead of myself. I am just happy that we're here. We have all kinds of interesting stuff to share today, more news about uh, vaccines, more news about Nayarit and what's going on in the state of Nayarit in terms of COVID-19. We have some leisurely stuff for the weekend. We have a very, very important Spanish word to learn today because it affects us all or many of us during this month. And we're going to talk about this particular word um, and we're going to end with a laugh because we have good reasons to end this broadcast with a good laugh. So I'm excited. I hope you are too. Let me take a quick look at who's here before we dive into our adventures today. As always, please, if you have any important questions that you absolutely want us to acknowledge or address during the broadcast, it helps us a lot if you add the letter Q at the beginning. That way we will not miss it. Um, Lots of, oh my goodness, I love it, I love it. Lots of friendly people joining us. Um, uh, Judy Simmons is in GV, which to me it must mean um, glamorous vixens, no. Uh, Great Virginia, no. Um, Guadalupe, I don't know what that means, but wherever you are, Judy, it's great that you're here. I love it, I love it. Uh, how about that rain last night? Yes, uh, it, it, it rained last night and I looked out the window this morning and it is still drizzling. And I am very, very, very happy for that. Uh, Raymond is just down the street and again, it is drizzling out there. Very unusual for this time of year, but very, very welcome. Joey, I hadn't seen you for a while and it's always great to uh, see you here. It's always a pleasure to run into my friends Joey and Isaac, who are always busy keeping the gay community connected through their publication, Gay Guide, here in Puerto Vallarta. We love them dearly. Um, good morning to Clay, who always has interesting things to share with us. Um, the Vancouver part of me loves the temporary cooler air and cloudy skies here in PV. Well, Carol, let me tell you, I love this weather. This weather lets me, puts me in this kind of like mood in which I just want to stay home and drink coffee or warm beverages and listen to music and meditate on life all day long. Uh, <clears throat> Paul says, turns out I am vaccinated. I wonder how that happened. Is this something that happened when you woke up one day and you realized that you were vaccinated? I love it. 
Um, actually, I assume you've been we're in some kind of a trial, and it's good to know that you've been vaccinated. I'm looking forward to to the vaccine myself. We'll see what that happens, when that happens, and how that happens here in Mexico. In the meantime, let us get um, started with our news because we have quite a few uh, quite a few things to cover today. So let's just go there. Boom. Well, the state of Nayarit came up in conversation yesterday. We were mentioning how they were considering or they are considering making face masks mandatory, at least in uh, in the city of Tepic and in um, the municipality of Bahia de Banderas. Um, Nayarit, of course, has been concerned about being in a good place so that they can increase their hospital capacity uh, in terms of um, occupancy and... Um, but the the state uh, the the state of Nayarit's health secretary has informed that it is not likely that they will switch over to the green traffic light today. As we know, every Friday the federal authorities give us an update on which states are in which color, according to the COVID nineteen uh, national stoplight system. Uh, so uh, the state secretary of health continues to encourage people that are in Nayarit to follow all the guidelines. And we already know the guidelines, so there's no need to repeat them just yet. Um, in other news from Bahia de Banderas municipality, we learn that the director of public security by name of Ricardo Guerra Sanchez, has been removed from his post, from his charge, from his job, because he's um, presented no improvement in security in in uh, Bahia de Banderas, in the municipality north of Puerto Vallarta. So he was removed from office of this just yesterday. He began uh, in the position of director of security back in 2017, but he was... Um, he was uh, detained or jailed actually in uh, 2018 for his possible relationship to the disappearance of a city council person, Salvador Macias. He was in prison for a few months. He was set free in 2019 in December. And one month later, this past January, after having been in jail, he was put in charge again of public security for the municipality. Try to explain that. I can't. Um, and um, and he's been removed from his office because um, the increase in, in vehicle theft and, and parts theft from vehicles and motorcycle theft and, uh, and, uh, and other b burglaries has pretty much put him in evidence that he's not doing his job. So this is bad news and good news. Well, it's bad news that he was not doing his job. It's good news because hopefully the authorities in the state of Nayarit will put somebody in charge that is better equipped to uh, fulfill his obligations. Um, moving right along, uh, we mentioned yesterday as to how hotels in Nayarit wish to uh, increase their occupancy uh, to 50 percent. Meanwhile, here in Puerto Vallarta, local hotels are hoping that the health authorities for the state will allow local hotels to increase occupancy. Am I getting that right? It's occupancy, not occupation. Yes, occupancy. Thank you, Logan. Occupancy uh, is hoped to be increased up to 75% for the rest of the month in anticipation of all the people that tend to come to Puerto Vallarta this time of year and enjoy our destination. Um, it is unclear as to whether the health authorities are going to make this or let this happen or not. <clears throat> let me continue then with this news item that comes to us from the um, from Noticias PB, and they tell us that the local church, the Church of Guadalupe, has started to put into place these protocols in which they make sure that all the people that congregate at the church this um, this time of year to say hello to the Virgin of Guadalupe are following the guidelines as they should. Um, and there's a lot of photographs here showing people properly being allowed into the church. 
including one photograph of the the church hostess who's wearing the face mask under the nose. Gotta love her. But uh, hey, at least they're trying. <laughs> at least they're trying. Moving right along, uh, we've also been talking about vaccines. And Vallarta Independiente reveals some kind of study or poll in which it's shown that Mexicans as a whole are not so eager to put to 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 be subjected to the vaccine. Uh, according to this study, well, actually, uh, oh, this is a series of, of questionnaires put out by El Financiero, the financier, who is, a, it is a pretty reputable publication here in Mexico. So I'm going to believe that this is interesting and useful and credible information. According to this, um, 55% of Mexicans would not want to have the, to receive the vaccine right away. Um, they would rather wait to see how well other people do with it. And 10% of the people that answered um, say that they would just not want to get a vaccine, period. So there's a fair amount of skepticism in Mexico. We don't know exactly how and if this is being taken into account by health authorities in terms of the effectiveness of the vaccine. But again, we will have to wait and see. We had our own little informal poll yesterday. And, and from the looks of it, most of us uh, members of this particular cluster would be willing and happy to receive the vaccine right away. Uh, some with certain nationality considerations, which is fair. Uh, I myself would just love if somebody would come by and prick me at some point. Um, and I don't mean that as the way you're thinking, at least not yet. We will have some pricky um, bit of news later on. Uh, but let me stop for a second just to see where you're at. <clears throat> because I get excited with the news and then I feel like I'm not paying attention to you. How horrible. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um... Oh, okay, that explains it. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, I remember that you had mentioned that you had been in a study, and it's it's interesting to know that they actually tell you that you got the actual vaccine. I would think that in those studies, they would never reveal who was the placebo or not, but this must be a source of comfort for you. I hope that is the case, and uh, I hope you're doing okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Lots of comments, no specific questions. So I'm going to just look at this one from Linda. Where did the rain come from? Well, I don't know, Linda, but it is. it feels good. It feels, at least I think it feels good. So let's hope that this does not turn into a negative thing for some. <laughs> Lucina Pettigrew says the clouds. Come on, that's so funny. Well, at least I think it's funny. You guys are in a good mood, I hope. Let me continue with my news. Uh, it is um, interesting to see that, according to Contralinea, the, we reported yesterday that Disney Cruises is hoping to resume their cruises in the Pacific Riviera in January, but Carnival Cruise Line has now announced that they will not start until March, while other um, cruise lines are not starting until April. So... For those people who were eager to hop on a cruise or who were eagerly awaiting the income that is derived from cruise passengers, this is just not going to materialize uh, as we know it or as we're used to it, at least not in the near future. Uh, my last bit of formal news, I think, let me check, yes. My last bit of formal news, uh, President of Mexico, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, in one of his morning addresses to the nation, he uh, made the unusual move of encouraging all Mexicans in all parts of the country to stay put this December, to stay home, to not go out, to celebrate with their families and loved ones, um, to keep the partying to a minimum because we want to make sure that we continue to act as responsibly as possible in the light of the fact that there are still cases, many cases of coronavirus in Mexico, and we have to continue following our guidelines, uh, which we know um, what they are, safe distancing, wearing a face mask, uh, constant hand washing, etc., etc. So, 
with that said, um, oh my goodness, I am not watching the Science Channel anymore, Discovery Channel, because all I have to do <laughs> is come in here and ask questions like, where does the rain come from? I love it. Thank you very much, Terry, for that academic uh, treaty. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, clouds for us locals are like a sunny day for most others. This is true. This is true. I actually like my cloudy days as a photographer. Clouds make uh, the world look beautiful. Of course, I like my sunny days, but I'm digressing. Let's not go there. Let me uh, <clears throat> agree with Linda with, with Linda in, in terms of this thing that uh, our president said. There is a question here. I wonder if vaccine would only go to those who didn't get COVID previously because of antibodies and such. Um, that's a really good question, Douglas. I don't have an answer just yet. Again, I think we're all awaiting for the official protocols or guidelines or procedures that are going to be announced by our president, apparently, this coming Tuesday, to find out who gets the vaccine, when, and how. So we're going to stay put. We're going to answer those questions as soon as we have answers to them, including the question of what happens with the foreign community? What happens if you are here on a, on a, on a tourist visa? What happens if you're here uh, with a temporary residence? So forth and so on. These are all very important questions from some of our viewers, and we will be addressing them as soon as the answers become available. Let us jump quickly to the weather and let us continue with a couple of other tidbits that I have for you. Here we go. Boom. Look at it. It's 23 degrees and it is raining in carrot weather land. It feels like 26. It is 73 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a 94% humidity right now and it must be because of the rain that's falling from the clouds where water condensates and blah, 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 blah. blah. Thank you very much for all the scientific explanations. Um, <clears throat> it's raining, it's pouring, the old man is passed out drunk on the park bench again, says Carrot Weather. Well, good for him, at least he's getting refreshed. Possible light rain in the morning and afternoon today with a high temperature of 26. Clear throughout the day tomorrow with a high temperature of 27. And Sunday, it'll be partly cloudy through the day. Winds light and variable. Gotta love it. It's December. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. And with December and the parties going on, um, actually, before I go where I'm about to go, let me tell you that I want to answer this question uh, for Claude. The cluster, does anyone know where we can go for an antibody test for COVID-19? I can tell you that a friend of mine who got a little bit of a scare and turns out she is negative, was directed to go to the Centro de Diagnóstico that is on Francisco Villa. Um, as you're heading towards Macro Plaza on the left side, I called and made an appointment for her because she could not speak uh, Spanish. And when I called and asked for information, they told me that the test is 4,500 pesos and that you get your results via email uh, 24 hours later. Claude, if you want more specific information about this place and where it is located, feel free to send me a, a message and I will give you all the particulars because this just happened two days ago, literally. Uh, let's see. Okay, so as I was saying, as I was saying, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. And uh, he, this brings to us an important business that um, that I want to talk about and it's well it's not necessarily business but it is an important word that everybody should be aware of because you will find that this word comes into conversation quite a bit this month and it is a word called aguinaldo. Aguinaldo is um, uh, or also known as the end of year bonus, is an extra payment given to employees at the end of December. Although the amount of the payment depends on a number of factors, it usually matches an employee's monthly salary and can be paid in one or more installments depending on the country. In fact, 
in some countries, this extra payment or bonus is mandatory by law, and in other countries, it is not. In Mexico, it happens to be mandatory by law, and not only that, um, employees have to receive it by the end by the uh, end of the twentieth of the month. Now, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because there was this headline on the paper in which trash collectors are asking for their aguinaldo and there are divided opinions on this subject. And let me explain this because aguinaldo affects all of us, affects our employees, it affects us as employees of others and so forth and so on. The paper, the, the headline that I shared with you has something to do specifically with the fact that trash collectors and also sometimes mailmen, uh, the people that distribute the mail, yes, there is such a thing as mailmen in Mexico, and they will occasionally bring actual <clears throat> letters or posted packages and whatnot to our homes. They are in the habit of knocking on people's do doorbell and saying, uh, well, I want my aguinaldo. And it is, I'm gonna, it's one thing that I'm not gonna say it's right or wrong. Um, I can share my opinion about this. But what happens with the Aguinaldo is if, if employees are hired by a company, if they are uh, formal employees, they are already receiving an Aguinaldo by law. So why do they expect people like you and me to give them extra money just because you may not know any better whether you should do it or not. Now, I'm not going to tell you to do it. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm simply going to say that this is probably going to happen to you. Somebody is going to come to you and ask you for an aguinaldo. So please know that if they're not your employees, you can give them a tip or you can give them something, but you are not obligated to do that. Now, this has to do with employees that work for the city or for somebody else that are already receiving an aguinaldo. Now, let's look at people like myself. People like myself, people like your maid, for example, um, people like your gardener are not formal employees. We are not formal employees because there is not, we haven't signed a contract with anybody. Um, and I'm not going to say we because I don't want you to think that I'm expecting an aguinaldo from anyone. Um, I'm happy to be an independent employee. Uh, employee. I'm happy to be my own boss and I'm happy without an aguinaldo, although I'm sometimes jealous that my friends sometimes tell me, well, I got my aguinaldo and I'm going to buy a car. Well, that's lovely. But this is important because you have maids, we have maids, we have gardeners, we have people that help us out, and it is important to be mindful of that. Again, you are under no obligation to give people anything. But, um, but for example, when I had a maid, before I decided to become a caveman and keep my place dusty all the time, <laughs> I always gave my maid a good amount of money. In fact, I gave her about two months equivalent because... She is someone that has the keys to my house. You have to trust these individuals. You have to build relationships with them, especially if you let them into your space. So all I am suggesting is that you become a little bit thoughtful about this. You understand what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. And I hope that this has been helpful and informative. I am very happy to look at your questions and comments now because I am sure that some of these may come up. Uh, <clears throat> and I didn't look at when this appeared, but I am almost guessing, Gary, that you guessed the word even before I mentioned it, uh, just because I know you. It's great to see you. Uh, Dave puts on an interesting question. Am I going to do a show on popular Mexican Christmas songs? What a fabulous idea. I love that. Let me let me put something together, Dave. Uh, we have a couple of songs that are very much of us that I would be very, very happy to talk about, including, for example, our beautiful song for, for the Posadas, which is a complicated song with choreography and choruses and so forth and so on. We'll talk about that at some point. Um, 
let's see. Trash collectors deserve tips. Absolutely. But then I saw an interesting comment coming up. Hold on just a second. Uh, rub it in, Logan. I know my dear friend, Logan. Te mando un beso. Mwah! Has been talking about his aguinaldo. I know that he is very excited about it. Um, <clears throat> since you're talking about Aguinaldo dos Luna Guerra Posada, every single day of the year, Luna gets love, singing, happiness, pets, frolicking. She gets everything for me every single day, and she is going to get a posada. Why not? Brian Simpson asks, how much should one give? Well, it is difficult to calculate Aguinaldo because there's a lot of formulas and so forth and so on, but you can calculate about a month's worth of wages. And that is an, a nice, um, comfortable way to, 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 to come up with a good amount. If that seems like too little to you, you can always add more, of course, and it's, it's a personal thing. Uh, let's see. Bing, ba -ding, bam, boom, bam, boom. This is the comment that I wanted to get to. Sylvie is absolutely correct. Uh, you can have somebody just knocking on your door and say, hey, I'm one of the trash men. Give me some money. And you may or may not necessarily know because you're not standing outside of the door um, to, uh, to, to greet the trash people every time they come by. So keep in mind, um, keep that in mind as you make your own decisions. And again, be certain that you know who you're giving your aguinaldo to if somebody knocks on your door and you actually answer. Joe Willis asks, have you decided to get another car? Actually, Joe, I am saving money to bring my, my, my comatose car back into the world of the living. Little by little, I'm putting money aside and I am hoping that I will be able to resuscitate my car. Um, not yet, but we are getting there very, very slowly, but very, very steadily. Um, oh, this is so nice to know. We participate in a community Aguinaldo for the trash collectors here on Calle Pulpito. That is so sweet. That is great to know because that means that you're working with your own neighborhood. Fantastic. Uh, what is the usual amount to tip your garbage people? I think the Aguinaldo is about a month's worth. So if you don't know how much money the, 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 the trash people make, um, Shoot, then I don't know. I mean, I would probably give them between two hundred and five hundred pesos, and um, and and that's only if you feel inclined to do this. Um, again, you're under no obligation, or maybe you feel compelled to do this. Again, I'm not going to say that it is a do or a don't do. I'm just suggesting that this might happen. Uh, <laughs> oh, Michael, it takes one to know one. Um, <laughs> well, I'm very fortunate because sometimes my trash guys are actually quite good looking, but that's just me. I'm not going to go there. Not going to go there. Let me um, <clears throat> let me continue with some headlines because we still have a few things to talk about at, um, that I think you will appreciate. Uh, for starters, um, we collect these every Friday, five things to do this weekend, courtesy of the New York Times. And again, New York Times doesn't disappoint. There's some interesting things for you to watch this weekend um and um i'm gonna leave this here along with the rest of the show notes um and i'll keep this um uh, up I'll, I'll share it with you when the show is over i'm sorry i seem to like just go into a little blank but i'm back <laughs> warner media ceo explains why he's blowing up the movie business now i put this here because it's interesting to me and it might be interesting to some of you Yesterday, Warner Brothers <clears throat> announced that in 2021, all their blockbusters, all the movies that they expect to release on the movie theater, are going to be available on demand on the same day through HBO. I am talking of big films like the um, like, like Dune and the new Matrix sequel and uh, Wonder Woman uh, 1984 and so forth and so on. And it would seem to some that Warner Media is trying to get rid of the movie business. So in this article that comes to us from Vox, this is explained. Uh, it's an, a conversation with Jason Kyler about the logic behind the move. Some of you may be interested in this, some of you may not, but I'm going to share it with you so that you can take it from there. Uh, yesterday, we talked about the United Nations uh, 
change of mindset as far as cannabis and its medical um, properties. And here is, of course, Vox offering us a very, very thorough explainer uh, article on what exactly this means. I'm going to leave this here with you again. You may be interested in reading it. Um, for those of you and those of us that do sports out and about, you will be happy to know that the city is spending a fair amount of money, 3.3 million uh, pesos, in rehabilitating the, the tennis courts and other courts in the stadium uh, right across the street from the Sheraton. This is nice that they're doing this because this is a very popular place where a lot of people go and exercise, talk about uh, eye candy. Uh, Michael, if you want to find some eye candy, this is a great place to go look. Uh, so this is good news for Puerto Vallarta as a whole. This uh, sports unit, it, it is called Agustin Flores Contreras. We call it the stadium. But it is nice to see that some uh, funds are being dedicated to uh, improve this particular facility. Um, I also want to let you know that I am absolutely tickled, tickled for the penises. Yes, you have been sending penises my way. Ever since we started talking about them, I thank you for sending me penises because that, make me, that makes me realize that I'm not the only one here who's a little bit penis obsessed. I got this from one of our viewers. And then this morning, I got this one from another Coffee and Headlines viewer. So. I apologize if all of a sudden you are seeing penises everywhere you go, but as long as you are, continue <laughs> photographing your peni and continue sending them my way. I am just tickled, tickled to receive all these penises. <laughs> uh, you guys are too funny. <clears throat> Let me take a quick look at any comments clay asks why not open a gofundme my car account i i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you clay i feel embarrassed to go that way to go that route i i um ugh, i don't know I, I it's you know people put such important things on gofundme i just f would feel completely absolutely embarrassed to do something like that but i appreciate your concern and i appreciate the the suggestion i will continue to save maybe santa will surprise me i don't know but doing a gofundme just makes me feel public and exposed and vulnerable and awkward and um yeah i don't think i can do that okay anyhow i wanted to share something that I saw this morning, and this has been just, uh, just, just, just going around my head. And this has to do with the monolith that we showed yesterday. And no, I'm not monolith obsessed. I am curious as to who is building these monoliths and who is putting them up and who is tearing them down. It's not Luna. We've had a conversation about this. <clears throat> and... Um, but the one that appeared in, in California has been torn down. <clears throat> it has been torn down according to this um, uh, headline. It has been turned down by homophobic white supremacists. And they apparently, there's a video, I haven't watched it, but apparently in the video, they, their group leader said, Christ is king of this country. We don't want illegal aliens from Mexico or outer space. So let's tear this bitch down. Come on. <clears throat> and that stayed with me. That comment stayed with me. And and I want to I want to first of all offer a disclaimer because no, I am not going to comment on this with the intention or of inspiring hatred quite the country. When I read that, I thought to myself, where, where do these people go on vacation? And do they come to Mexico? You know, we don't want illegal aliens from Mexico. But then I wondered, I asked myself, and, and I don't mean to preach either, you know, I mean, I wonder if these people choose to come and spend their vacations in Mexico. And and then I asked myself, you know, if one of them happened to walk into my store 
into my business, into my home, into my life, what would I say to them? How would I react? And I am not inviting commentary here. Um, if you care to think about this on your own time, you're more than welcome to. I am going to be giving this a lot of thought because there's a part of me that would be very inclined to just say, you know, fuck you. You're not welcome in my store if you feel that way. But then there's a part of me that would say, I would at least be curious. You know, it's like, how did you come to this realization or how would you how did you come to feel and think this way? Um, I just think it's absolutely sad and horrible that people from any place have these kinds of uh, of mindsets. This is just horrible. And I'm not saying that this only happens in the United States. It happens everywhere in the world. I just it just happened to catch me in a weird moment when I happened to feel vulnerable this morning and I was introspective and I just continue to think about this. So um, so ask yourselves if you care to ask yourselves. I think Mushi nails it down. Plenty of racists enjoy going to Mexico. I know some, which I personally find really odd. You know, if you have such a strong anti-Mexican senti sentiment, what what are you doing here? If they are again, I you know, for all I know, I've had dinner with people that feel this way and I just never knew it. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. I just happened to see it in a headline and it just made me made me very introspective. Um, I don't want to dwell on this. What I want to do instead is end today's broadcast with a good laugh. And this comes from has to be the most funny video that I will be, be able to see today because I doubt anybody could send a video in my direction that is funnier than this. And I am going to give you obviously the bookmark so that you can watch it on your own. And this is some woman from the United States, apparently, who after having had two bottles of wine, she decided to film herself having discovered a genius way to peel hard-boiled eggs. It's only 49 seconds, but it is hysterical. And I'm not going to play it because we don't want to piss YouTube off, although I'm tempted. You know, it's Christmas. Maybe I should play it. Do you want to watch this with me? Let me just play this. If I get into trouble, so be it. Hold on. This is muted and it shouldn't be. I hate shelling them. There you so, go. Let me start that again. Avoid a little text. There we go. Okay. I've done had two bottles of wine, but I have to show you this because it's the funniest shit I've ever seen. Okay. So I'm trying to make deviled eggs. And uh, I hate shelling them. So. Avoid a little technique. You take the tip of it off. <laughs> break up the bottom of it. <laughs> Comes right out. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. Just pop it, pinch it, blow it. So there you have it. I'm sorry. I am a simple man. This just totally made my day right before. Oh, dear. Hold on. Hold on. Shut up. Stop it. Uh, this just totally made my day earlier on when I was getting ready to, to start the show. And I thought I would share it with you. So if you're going to be blowing or you want to practice your blowing, um, just um, think about it. So with that thought in mind, I am going to, <laughs> even my eyes are feeling all squinty. Let me take a quick look at your final comments. Um, um, let me take a quick look at your final comments. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lordy. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, uh, okay, so there's no questions. There's just questions. There's comments about that That thing that I showed you. Oh, God, my, I'm all teary-eyed because of the laughing. <laughs> uh, 
Sheila says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. Absolutely. This song is a beautiful song that Burt Bacharach and Hal, Hal, Hal David composed. Um, I don't even know if it was featured in a movie. It may have been featured in Lost Horizon, which is the worst musical film of all time. Um, it's worth watching. Uh, Lost Horizon is a movie that Burt Bacharach made, move, uh, made the music for, and it's about this expedition that gets lost in the Himalayas, and they find this place where people don't age. And it was bad. It was bad. It was it was 420 bad. You need to get high as a kite to watch it and enjoy it. But the song may be from that movie. I'm not sure. But it is definitely a song by Burt Bacharach. It's a beautiful song. Um <clears throat> Elvin shares a Twitter that made him, gave him a good laugh. I'm going to be looking for that um, later on when I'm done with the broadcast comments. Um, and thank you very much for, for laughing with me, Michael. And thank you very much to all of you for laughing with me. Um, I am, I'm going to try the one too, Judy. I may not drink two bottles of wine prior to. I may drink half a bottle of wine prior to. But that was that was funny. And yes, that made me want to go boil some eggs as well. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is so funny. That is so funny. See, that's why I'm afraid of having 420 and headlines or brownie and headlines. Um, it's going to be something that really um, I, I am afraid that we're going to be so silly. It's not even funny. Anyhow, I see that we are at the end of our comments. As always, I am so grateful for your company. I am grateful for your support. Um, I am grateful for the fact that we have this community to exchange ideas during the month of December because it is a complicated month regardless of where your beliefs are with the holidays, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or not. Uh, these are challenging times because our times in which we reflect, we think about friends and families, and we are in a very, very crazy world right now. So I am grateful for the fact that we have this little get together. I encourage you to continue sending your comments, welcomes, ideas, and suggestions our way so that we can continue to enjoy the best of our city and our surroundings. With that thought in mind, I wish you an amazing Friday. I wish you an amazing weekend. And I think we have a little bit of this. Oh, or we don't. I try to play my Friday sound effect and it seems to be missing in action. So let's not play the Friday sound effect. Let us get going. Have a great day and I hopefully will see you again tomorrow. Take care.